To begin analyzing your reports in Seller Central, first go to the Reports tab. You'll notice there are a few different types of reports listed here, but the most useful ones that we'll go through are your payment reports, business reports, and advertising reports. First, let's begin with the payment reports. Starting with your statement view, this is your go-to financial dashboard that shows you when and how much you'll be paid. Here, you can check your current total balance, available funds, and recent payouts. Below, you can even change your settlement period to show either the current or previous payment periods. Below that is a graph that breaks down all of your sales and cost charges. Now, a lot of new sellers often have questions about what the account level reserve means. Essentially, this is the amount held in reserve to ensure that you have enough funds available to fulfill any claims or chargebacks. It's a normal part of selling on Amazon to see some funds listed here. Typically, what happens is this amount will fluctuate depending on how long you've been selling and how high your return rate is. The longer you sell on Amazon and the lower your return rate is, the less you'll have reserved. Now at the bottom, you'll see when your payout is expected to be transferred into your bank account. On the second tab, this is the transaction view page. This page displays all of your account transactions within a statement period, a past number of days, or a custom date range. You can even change the type of transaction with this drop-down menu. For example, if you just wanna see all of your refunds, you can do that here. At the top, you can even search for a specific order number. The next section is the all statements view. On this page, you can download all of your payment reports for each settlement period. Just select the account type and the time period that you wish to review. Below, you'll see a breakdown of your payouts, which is very similar to what you'll find in the statement view. Clicking this link will navigate you to the statement view page for that selected time period. You can also use this link to navigate to the transaction view page and see a list of all your transactions for that settlement period. Alternatively, you can even download your settlement report when it becomes available. And hey, if you're getting any value from this video so far, let us know by smashing that like button down below. So on a bi-weekly basis, these are the three most important payment reports that you'll want to review. Now, the next type of report you'll also want to review are your business reports. This section offers a variety of sales reports, all listed in the left navigation bar. Starting with the sales dashboard, this page gives you a sales snapshot, featuring up-to-date order metrics that you can customize with the following filters. You can filter results by changing the date and type of fulfillment channel, and you can also filter results by using the sales breakdown to view sales by marketplace total, business buyers, and non-business buyers. Down here at the graph, you can select points in time to compare against your selected date range. At the bottom, you can select which dates you want to compare against. For example, if you set the date filter to today, the compare choices will compare today's sales to yesterday, same day last week, and same day last year. If you select year to date, the compare choices are this year and last year. Alternatively, you can view the same information in a table view by clicking here. Now, the next type of business report that's helpful to review is your sales and traffic by date. Here, you can view sales on a daily, weekly, or even a monthly basis with a focus on different metrics such as the total items ordered and sessions. There are a bunch of other helpful metrics down in this table below such as your units ordered, and this is different from total items ordered. Put simply, units ordered are how many units were purchased, whereas total order items refer to how many customers purchase your products. You also have average sales per order item, and this is helpful to know your average order value. The average selling price column allows you to see what price customers purchase your product at, and this is great to know, especially if you're running coupons or other promotions. And another helpful column I like to use is the order item session percentage. Basically, this is your conversion rate. Now, another way that you can view your reports is by ASIN. This one is helpful if you have multiple products because you can compare sales and traffic by parent and child ASINs. You can adjust the date ranges on both reports and you have the same metrics provided in the last report we just walked through. With all of these reports, you can either view them here or download them to a CSV file. Okay, so those are your primary business reports, and I recommend checking in on them at least a few times a week. Now, the last type of report that you'll also want to review are your advertising reports. If you're running advertising campaigns on Amazon, this is where you can periodically review the results of your campaigns to give you the insights you need to make optimizations. Once here, click Create Report. Now, depending on the type of campaigns you're running, 
you want to use this drop down menu and download reports for each one. For example, if you're running sponsored product campaigns, select sponsored product and open the report type drop down menu. From here, there are a bunch of helpful reports, but the one you'll most likely use the most is the search term report. With this report, you can identify which search terms are the highest performing for your campaigns and which ones are costing you the most money. Next, choose the reporting period you want to review. Just keep in mind with search term reports, you can only go back about 60 days. Then once you're ready, click run report. Coming back to this page, once your report is fully downloaded, click the download icon to open up the report. Once opened, you can add filters to your columns and begin looking through the spend and sales columns to isolate the keywords that are performing the best and the worst. Also, keep in mind the ACoS column to help determine which keywords are the most profitable. It's recommended that you take your list of keywords that are performing well and add them into a manual campaign so that you can bid on them more aggressively. On the other hand, take the keywords that aren't performing well and add them as negative keywords inside the campaigns they're spending on. Because this strategy can take quite a bit of time to master, I recommend heading over to our other videos here on this channel to learn more about optimizing your advertising campaigns. We'll link those videos for you right here, and we'll also put them down in the video description. So make sure you watch those next videos, and as always, thanks for watching. From here, there are a bunch of helpful reports, but the one that you're...